All right, hello everyone, and welcome to the Core Academy stream of this fine week in November. And today we're gonna to be talking about the survival kit. So I did a stream about this last Thursday. We created a weapon and we used the weapon system, but we didn't really make figure out how to test it and make it accessible in the game. So that's what we're gonna to do today. I am very excited. Thank you everyone for joining me. Um, and let us get started. So the survival kit version 1.0, you guys have probably played it as the survival kit here. Let's see, how many how many plays is this thing up to? 1.3 thousand plays um is uh where this game's at so it's obviously doing really well it's a great way to start your project the thing that you need to know is if you have already started a project on the survival starter kit and you want to use the rate new changes unfortunately the only way to do that is to make a new copy and bring your changes into that new copy now we have all of the templating system and stuff like that so that's not actually a huge um not a huge change, but it will be that we can't, you can't just bring the new changes into your copy um, for the survival kit. Um, and some of the changes are uh, just like optimizing the game and things like that. The balances of how much different materials spawn to reflect, you know, how useful they are. Um, inventory opening and closes working better. Your death, the death stashes spawn over time. So if you've ever seen like rooms blocked and stuff like that by death stashes, that's been fixed. Um, cooldown for picking up loot. Cooldown for opening inventory. Interesting. Um, and then just like a couple of uh, fixes to canned meat, the mousing lag, uh, scaling issues with the stop sign, picking up melee weapons, storage related errors, um, clickable X. Most of the bugs that you've seen so far, there are now fixes. Besides all the fixes to the kit, the systems and assets that are in here are going to be coming to community content. So if you're starting a project completely outside of the framework, but you wanna use some of the amazing um, assets that are part of it, then um, you will soon be able to do that without actually having to go dig them out of the survival framework yourself. So exciting things coming. Obviously this is all rolling out as we're doing this. So there's gonna be, it's a big big community process that we have here um and it is you know also there's a lot of people i've seen um like new dev gamer and stay punny who are working on content and grim grimland are uh working on content that they're sharing okay so what are we going to do i'm going to show you how to make a copy of the project again since we're making a new copy so i'm going to type in we're in create new project uh, did I already go to community projects? All right, so I do create and then I did community projects and then we'll get to this menu. Um, this is sorted by most copied so far. I'm gonna put survival in here um, and we'll see we've got the survival starter kit, um, which was published six days ago. It's weird, it doesn't show an updated. Um, but uh, so I'm gonna call this survival kit three because all I do is I've, I've made, I think like eight copies of this. So, okay, so this is a newer copy of it. You can tell I started in a different part of the project um, from where I would have started before. But of course, if I press play, everything's gonna look familiar. You're gonna be like, ah, yes. If I press play and it starts, ah, yes, this is, this is the town I know and love so well. Ah, there's the terrain complexity warning that I know and love so well. I don't think you need to worry about that unless it's really preventing your publish and it's, um, it's just something we're working on. Um, so that is, that's kind of a core fix. Um, so not part of these updates, but also obviously the game is running, it's doing fine. But let's talk about how we're going to make an item. Um, so again, in the documentation system, there is an item system. This now includes more instructions for creating consumables. Before it just had the weapons and didn't have the consumables. But um, what I'm about to do is not technically in it, but it more or less follows both of those flows. And we are going to make a scavengeable material. So I'm going to close up documentation. I'm going to go into gameplay systems and find the item systems. Now the item registry is where I'm going to start. This is where you need to put your items in order for them to show up. In this case, we're going to go into the registered item section and I want to be in the crafting materials section. So that is where I'm going to add a material that I want to have. And the way I do this is I'm going to pick one of them and I'm going to copy it 
Control W, right click duplicate, and we have the fun copy error that gives it a weird name. You'll notice that it doesn't actually have that name. That's just a bug in how it's being displayed in the hierarchy. It's actually called wood. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rename this and the thing that we're going to make, get psyched everyone. This is extremely valuable. I'm gonna make a potato. So we are gonna make a new item called potato. And the potato is not actually gonna be edible. Edible, it's not gonna be a consumable because then I would put it in the consumable. This is a raw potato. And if you wanted to make this an edible potato and have it cook, that's fine, totally cool. But what I am working on is a potato that you can craft with wood scraps to make a battery. So uh, yeah, because potatoes um, are not actually super nutritious. What they are is extremely hardy. Potatoes will grow in just about any circumstances. And that is the beauty and power of the potato. So that's what we're doing here. Sorry, I, um, this is all at zero, zero because they're not, they're, you know, representations of items in the world. So we've got this potato. And when I open it up, I go into, still annoyingly, I'm having some name change errors. Um, we'll notice that we've got basically a lot of different um, properties that we need to change about it. But the one I notice most is here, this thing called item miscellaneous wood scraps. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna drag the item into the world so that I can change it to not look like uh, wood scraps. So I wanna find this template and I know it's called item. So I could go into templates and I could look up, I could even like, search this like item thing but i also have this handy button that's find in catalog that when i click this selects the item that i want in to the space um and so now i have a copy of item miscellaneous wood scraps so i'm going to right click and de-instance this because i do not want to change wood scraps i want to make a new copy all right, everything's fine. I'm gonna F2 to rename it, and we're gonna change this to item miscellaneous potato. Okay, so that's the first step, and now I wanna change inside of here. We have, this is client side, so this is just gonna be sort of the visual aspect of the item, and I want to change this to look like a potato, and this is actually really easy. I'm gonna delete three of these things, delete them. I'll have this final one, and I am going to scroll down to the mesh property, which right now has a wooden two by four. I'm going to click it and find a sphere. Boom, sphere. Done, and it just so happens that the smart bark material is actually great for a little baked potato. So let's uh, let's scale this a little bit, and uh, yep, pretty happy. That is quite potato-like. No one would say that that was not a potato. It's just a potato. Okay, so that was step one. We made the geometry. We picked really lazy geometry, and it worked out really well. I tried the moss texture. It looks decent, but honestly, this bark, this bark is a really versatile, nice texture for when you want a little bit of depth um, and kind of like grrrness. Yeah, that's a technical term. So now we need to look at, um, and I'm gonna do the new thing that I've come up with, which is these custom properties. Um, at least zoom in on them. I know it's gonna be hard to see them when I edit them, but let's get a good look at what they are first. Um, okay, so we have six, one, two, three, four, five, six custom properties that we are changing here. We've got the name, that name is important. Um, one of the systems. So these systems were built by a team of people and they have a couple of different ways they implement. So one of them does it entirely based on the name. It's going to register these items by the name and it's gonna look them up by the name, which means you need to match the, I'm pretty sure you need to match the case. So stick with the whole starts with the capital letter thing. Um, and, um, and another one wants the reference to this item. So you're gonna see, or actually the item system version of it, which is different from this one. We're gonna get through all of this. So don't worry about it, just follow these steps. Come with me and everything will be fine. Um, so we're gonna change the item, we're gonna change the icon. Fortunately, as y'all know, we have no shortage of amazing icons. The max stackable size, the item type, the description, the rarity, all of that. Okay, so let's do that. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change this name to Potato. We're gonna pick an icon and I already picked one. It is, uh, let's see, vegetable, there we go. This fantasy vegetable. I, you know, there's an argument made for this. This looks very oniony for me. I like this little um, creature. Let's see here, how much bigger can I make these so you guys can see. Uh, but we are gonna go with, um, oh, that messed up my scrolling, annoying. We're gonna go with this weirdo guy here, cause I don't know, I just I just like it. 
looks like a little maybe mandrake or something um so that's gonna be my potato icon max stackable size i'm gonna change this to 24 so say you can hold about two dozen potatoes item type is gonna stay miscellaneous and then we're gonna add a description so right here i'm gonna say this description is it's a potato you can't eat it boom and it's gonna be common so we're gonna do that now i've got my item miscellaneous potato i'm gonna right click this and i'm gonna say uh create new template from this the name is going to populate from the name that i have here so that's item miscellaneous potato and we'll say new template okay boom so now we have the geometry and some basic data about that item the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to click on this because all of these custom properties need to match in another place and i'm going to click this button right here right next to the search of properties is a button that looks like two papers stacked on top of each other and that is going to be copy properties so we're going to copy the properties Everyone with me so far? Okay, so we copied those properties and this is the thing that hasn't been behaving the way I'm used to it behaving. And now technically I could delete this potato, but we're gonna keep it there because I love it. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into this potato and I'm gonna paste those properties. So that's the clipboard icon right next to it. And we're gonna paste properties. I scroll down to the bottom and if you remember, there were six things that I needed to change. So we're gonna do that now. They are uh, name, icon max stackable size item type rarity and description so let's uh do a close-up of this um just so you can really see it um and you can see that basically here the icon is actually an asset reference to the different ui things and we've gone from fantasy wood to fantasy vegetable the name is changing from wood to potato the max stackable size interestingly this has 20 for wood uh even though it was 30 in the item but in the item i don't think that is where it comes from so 20 is actually what it is and we're changing it to 24 either way the item type is miscellaneous and common and the description is it's a potato you can't eat it so i didn't actually change the item type and rarity but if you're working on a workflow where you just always do the same thing, check the last six properties, move on with your life. Um, so that's where we are with that. Um, and now once I do that, I'm going to click this blue button in the corner that says paste selected parameter values. Boop. Um, and so now, and this is the annoying thing that hasn't been working for me is it didn't change them. Um, so let's uh, go ahead and save and let me go back out and come back so this might be just something some temporary thing i'm gonna leave the game and come back and if not you know all right i'll have to type them in it's annoying but it's doable and i'll go back into my gameplay systems item system uh item registry uh registered items crafting materials and down here this still says wood um, and it doesn't seem to have changed anything so we're just gonna have to do it manually okay so we're gonna change this manually um, and that means I need to double click this and I need to find that vegetable that was this thing I need to change my max stackable size to 24 this should work I'm not exactly sure what changed um, and then we'll get that it's a potato you can't eat it okay um and then here with this the item reference um that would have been nice uh, that one we would have always had to add so now i need to go back into where i made that all caps item uh potato um and i think if i right click this i can find finding catalog and that'll also select that for me so then if i go here into um this item now i've got that selected potato and i just need to drag that over here into item so that the item that you get from this is that's being added to the registry is this potato that we made okay awesome so now i'm gonna f2 to rename this potato um there but the more important place to rename it potato is this name property because again that's how it's registering it um so now we just want to right now all we can test is that nothing breaks so i'm gonna press play and look for any errors um and we just have terrain complexity which basically doesn't count so we're great so this is all of the uh things that are doing here um set up things but you see i don't actually have an error in my event log so that's all we can test for right now okay so we have now added 
a crafting material. As far as we can tell, we've added this crafting material. I'm gonna just double check again that it has all the properties that I want it to have, because that's been behaving strangely. Potato, vegetable, all looks good. Okay. Um, now what I want to do is I want to make a salvage scavenge node. So the scavenge system is, we'll find this in level design and you'll basically find scavenger. So we're going to start in the town. So I'm going to use a town node and I actually just want this stop sign because this is sort of like the first thing that players always find in the, the playable version of the game. Um, so I'm going to grab the scavenge node and I'm just going to drag it into the middle of the street. Um, so that it's super easy to find and I want to change what I get out of it So that's not actually this trigger isn't where all the properties are the prop. This is just kind of generic stuff um, But I am going to f2 rename it. I'm going to call it scavenge node potato um, And then we've got the scavenge node and when I click this here where it says item name That is what we're going to change to make it get the potato literally all I have to do is write the word potato here um in item name and we can pick min quantity we can say max quantity maybe you can find like between one and three uh potatoes um and then search message you found a potato um okay so that's basically what we want to and this should be enough so even though it looks like a stop sign right now we press play And we got plus three potatoes. Did it not show up? Uh, let's look at our inventory is under what I, and there it is. Um, let me, uh, let's F11 so you can get a good gander at this. We've got a potato. We added it to our inventory. We did it. That's right, everyone can go home. We have potatoes. But of course these potatoes are completely useless in the context. So we need to add a couple more things. So that is, so scavenge nodes are like um, hard places in the world where you can say this thing is always gonna be there, right? I could destroy it once somebody's collected it, or I could just be like, this is kind of like a place where I wanna give players all of the equipment. So yes, indeed, yay potato. My name is Potato. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's do what is the kind of obvious thing, which is that we don't actually want this to look like a street sign. So I am gonna delete that geometry, de instance and delete, um, and add instead what I think evokes potatoes, which is uh, not vines, but ivy, right? If you've seen how potatoes grow, they're very, um, they're very viney. Um, so we could do that. We could actually grab our potato, although I didn't make a template for that. So what I'd do is I'd like item, uh, sorry, all caps, item underscore miscellaneous potato, drag that into the world, take this potato. It's a little off from the center. Um, drag this, it's called gem baguette because that's where we are. Um, which also wasn't the mesh it started out as de instance and reparent and we'll put that potato in there um, and uh, maybe uh, Zero out its position. So it's in the middle there. It's hard to see. Let me turn off the trigger so you can see this Maybe we'll put a couple of them around um, Just to get the idea of potatoes. No, not that one uh, Like that Maybe, maybe resize one of them. Okay, so that is my potato collection point. This has nothing to do with the item that goes through. Pure coincidence. Um, I'm gonna delete the, the potato items. And so now we can run through. Do -do 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 -do. Scavenge nodes respawn. Scavenge nodes respawn if they don't get destroyed. So it's like an option on them. Wait, where's my potato? Over here, okay. So now I can search and now I got three potatoes. So this one's response because it's checked. So you can look at the scavenge node. It's a custom property on the script, not the trigger. So that's, I think the little tricky thing about scavenge nodes. If I look at this and I pick the trigger, I have the interaction label, um, but if I click the script, then I have um, destroy when collected and respawn time. So I'm pretty sure destroy when collected means it will not respawn. Uh, let's test it. So here, what on earth? They're floating potatoes. All right, let's see if it respawns. Yep, yeah, nope, 
so yeah, so that's kind of you, you have your option to calibrate that. It's definitely the easiest way to test and in at least this version of it. I have no issue where I have to put that into one of the folders. I can actually take this node out and put it just like in the main game. So I'm not sure what was happening, but if I just like stick this scavenge node there, um, it will be fine. Not sure why it's floating. The floating thing is weird. That is um, very strange and I have no idea. I now want to add my item to a loot table. And the assertion that I'm making is anyone who's ever played Minecraft knows that zombies just have potatoes on them. That's just a fact about zombies. That's a established zombie fact. Um, which is that they just carry potatoes sometimes. So that's what we're gonna do first is I'm gonna take my mob trash, which is my easiest mob. I'm pretty sure that includes legs and things like that. And I'm gonna add a loot. Now again, the mistake that I made that I mentioned before is I tried to just drag my item in here because it seems to match these. You know, we've got like, if I look at item registry, registered items, and I look at say ammo, then I've got shells here and shells here. They are not the same thing. So instead, what we're gonna do is we're going to, like we do, duplicate one of these. So I'm gonna take, empty's a little bit of a weird one, so I'm gonna take water bottle and control W to duplicate. So I get now corner store apartment wallpaper, as we all know. Um, and we're gonna change its name either way to potato. Um, so now we've got potato here. It says water bottle there, because it's annoying. We're just gonna change it to potato still says water bottle i'm assuming it's potato and we need now this has an item property so we made the item that's the geometry and it has the custom properties then we made the item registry item and that's up here in item registry under uh crafting items and that is that is the one that we need to drag in here so i'm going to take this potato and i'm going to drag it down here to where it says water bottle and i'm going to succeed so we're gonna close out and come back in. So we've got the item system. We've got the item registry, the item registry for sure in um, crafting materials, registered items and crafting materials has my potato. It's a potato, it looks good. We've tested it, we're very happy. And then in the loot table, we've got the mob trash category and I am trying to duplicate this, but it, it won't let me, so I'm gonna delete it. Um, and we will duplicate another one um, and hopefully change its name to potato. And we did that and we successfully renamed it potato and it's updating. So now we just need to get our item, the potato, into this custom property right here. And that was really easy. So finally it worked. Maybe I just needed to pick something else. But now we have in my loot table a potato a uh, loot, it has a likelihood of five. I'm gonna change that to super high because I just wanna see potatoes everywhere. Um, and it's gonna be 20. Okay, so now I have a potato. We have the potato. Um, and it should be on my zombie loot, but I don't actually wanna chase zombies around and find that out. So I'm gonna put it in one more place, which is this trash can here. So what I can do now that it's kind of loot formatted is I can copy it in here and just put it in my trash can. Um, and so that should give you a 20% chance of finding it when you loot trash. So let's get all the way to the crafting system. Um, so I'm going to get into my hierarchy and I no longer need the item registry um, or really the item systems at all. Now I need the crafting system and we're gonna go into the recipes registry. And so now we have consumables or weapons or other and I'm not really sure I'm gonna call a battery a consumable for now maybe uh, I mean I guess you do consume it in the end and we're basically gonna look at the bandage uh, recipe and we're gonna use it as a template so when I look at the properties of this I find that there is a reward and a craft time and that inside of here I should have the ingredients that are basically requirements. Okay, so we're going to copy bandage, control W, get that weird name bug. And I don't know if that's also gonna change whether or not I can rename it. Probably saved. We're gonna rename this to uh, battery. So now we need a reward and for that we need another item. And in this case, we're gonna make it item consumable. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna find this in the asset catalog and it's the bandage. 
Um, and I'm gonna drop it in here. And um, this is what this looks about. So we're gonna de-instance this and we're gonna make a battery real quick, NBD. Um, and in order to do that, we have to register a whole item again and do this whole song and dance that we've done before. So we can do this. So we're going to say, this doesn't have the name because this is just the geometry. So we'll change the geometry first. Boom. All right, so this is my battery. This is uh, what it's gonna look like. I would like it to have metal rods out of it, but I'm not gonna waste your time. I'm gonna select both of these and do, um, this is a little little core things. Rename objects to match asset names. So if you do a lot of changing the mesh in there like I do, this is a really nice way to bring it back so that it's easy to tell which item is which. So this is my battery. I'm gonna rename this to battery. And then there's a couple properties I need to change on it again. So, and that is everything here. So this is going to be powers things. Um, the icon needs to be something from the sci-fi set. So let's just go and instead of going through there, we're gonna go to UI textures, um, icon, illustrated icons and sci-fi and find something battery like. So now in item consumable, I'm just gonna drag the ammo over here into the icon slot and there it is. It's gonna be consum consumable max, max stack. I'm gonna make it 16. Name is battery and rarity is, um, oh God, I need to make the, rar <laughs> the rarities list. Um, but we can find them by going to uh, item system, uh, not items UI, what is it? Item registry and item rarity. So they're all listed here. So legendary is the highest one and what we want is uncommon. Okay, I think item consumption example is fine, but I think that means you literally eat it or consumption effects, I don't Consumable was probably the wrong word because I think that implies consumable by humans, which this is a bad idea. But anyway, now we see how to make a food. We wanted to be able to craft the potato into like a baked potato. So I'm not gonna worry about the details of uh, the implications for what I've suggested. I'm just gonna right click this and create a new template from this. New template. So that was step one. And now we have to add it as a item into the item registry. So we'll go back to uh, item registry, registered items. And this is of course gonna be under consumables because <laughs> that makes sense. I'm gonna duplicate bandages again. Um, and we're gonna do what we did before, which is, did I just delete it? Uh, let's collapse everything. I did not delete it. So I am going to copy its properties. Um, and I'm gonna find it in the asset. So I click the little, it looks like a upside down teardrop to find it in, or like, I guess a pin you drop in a map. So what we would want is probably to make them yet another crafting item. And that would have been the correct approach for this. But you know, we're, we're also going for variety here. Um, so now I'm back in gameplay systems and item systems and item registry. Um, and, um, registered items, consumables, and I find my duplicate bandages that we are gonna rename battery. Um, and now that I have consumable battery selected here, I'm gonna go ahead and just drag that into the item slot. And probably we could make like a new script for like a different way you would consume this. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to paste properties. So we will grab those bottom six, um, which, okay, description, uh, rarity, uh, item type, icon, and name. And we're gonna paste all of those values. And now we see everything switched the way I wanted it to. I've got my battery. I've got my rarity, I've got the item moved, everything is good. So this is actually pretty awesome. So now I have a consumable item and now I would like to um, add it to my crafting system. So I have the recipes registry, I have consumables, we've got this thing called battery and inside of it, we're gonna add two materials, material cloth and material duct tape. Um, so material cloth, we're gonna change to material, um, material potato, 
account is going to be one and in it it looks like it just needs my item potato uh, right here we'll add that in and then this one is material duct tape and i'm going to change it to material um metal right we need some uh notes what do you call those material metal um, and then we'll do uh, material miscellaneous metal for the actual item that needs to be in here and the count we need to for each. Someone who has taken chemistry in recent memory, tell me what those sticky up, the, the, the two metals of different ionic potential. Something, 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 something. I don't remember very well. And then I need to change this thing's name to material uh, metal. Okay, it's happy now. So theoretically we have a battery recipe um, and I just need a scavenge node with metal in it. So let's uh, fake one of those right next to my potato. Uh, where's my potato? Where's that potato? There it is, okay. Here, we're gonna take the scavenge node um, and we're gonna duplicate this um, and we will make this a scavenge node metal. Maybe we have one somewhere. All right, whatever, we'll delete that. It seems to be whenever that name bug happens, I also can't um, change anything about it. Um, so that's probably a related bug. So what do we want to do? We're going to go into the scavenge node system and just see if one already is metal. Cause that would be easier. Do we have anything that is metal metal? Okay. So we've got this. Where are you? You are inside of this building. I'm just going to pull you out. And we're gonna stick this guy right next to the potato. Where's that potato? Right there. We'll just, uh, nah. We'd like that thing and we'll bring this down. Put you right next to the potato. And as a scavenge node, I should be able to, on the scavenge script, put the minimum quantity to two so that I get the number that I want. All right, let's press play and test this out. That is uh, the idea. Um, uh, okay, so there's my random battery model, but it doesn't do anything. You can't pick it up. Um, okay, so we've got Potatoes, we got one and two metals. We've got them. So now let's open the crafting system. That is X to craft. Oh, this is it. I, it's just still called bandages and still using that icon. All right, interesting, we can craft this. And what did we get? What's in our inventory? Press I, we got bandages. Okay, so the recipe did work and it's using our potato and our metal in the quantities that we wanted, um, but the name did not change when I needed it to, so we can fix that. We can fix that. It's a bandage. It is indeed. So let's just go back into the recipes. Not item system, but crafting system. Recipes registry, consumable, and under bandage, this says battery, but if I, let's see here. Yeah, where do I have another opportunity? Yep, this just is still the bandage. So we'll drag potato into here and we will rename it. Now it's named battery. So let's just try one more time to get the potato. It's very quick to craft. Um, let's see here. I actually only need the metal scraps prob probably. Not sure where my potato's being weird. Uh, it might be relative to how I put it in there. Okay, right. And we want to uh, X for crafting. X for crafting. And now I did. I put the potato in there. That's like, yeah. This is a this is a secret power potato. This is a metal consumption system. <laughs> All right, you let's. You know what? No, I'm not. I'm not just admitting defeat right now. We're gonna fix this. We're going to change this so this actually has the battery in it item consumable battery We're putting it in there We're putting it in there 
And we're gonna press play. And F11 and X to craft. We did it, friends. My comrades in core, that is a system to craft a battery. And now in our inventory, we have one battery. So you have seen the complete system. You could have been, I know, and that would make much more sense as a consumable. Um, I really, I wanted kind of a, like, you have to be at a, sh I don't know, make something really custom, basically something like a, a furnace. Um, if you're a, a crafter of the mines, then you would be familiar with a, uh, a cooking conversion system. So thank you everyone for joining me. I will be in voice on the Discord here to chat about anything and everything, but ideally things related to creating in core because that's what I like talking about. Um, and um, yeah, Melissa, Marie, please join us. We're really happy to have you um, and help get you started with things. Um, and um, yes, I will see you all for everyone else. And I will see you all in the oh my god i can do this